What she's asking is, I think, uh, correct me if I heard it correctly, so uh, with respect to the debt-based system and, uh, and, and sustainability, the necessity for growth, what are the impacts? Is that... Is that well, I'd be happy to, um, to respond briefly. Um, there is, of course, a link between the financial system and the pressures on the environment. If we have unnecessary growth and wasteful growth and harmful growth, then that's bad. And very often that is driven by a financial system that is purely profit-oriented and driving for growth and returns for shareholder value maximization. And that is the problem when you have financial institutions that are owned by profit-oriented shareholders. And that's why I think a solution is actually to have more not-for-profit banks. Um, and among the international banks, I think the, the not-for-profit, the stakeholder banks, Genossenschaftsbank and Volksbank Raiffeisen, also uh, the, in, in Canada, Jardin, and uh, all sorts of cooperative um, banks have a better track record. They lend for green projects, uh, carbon footprint reduction um, investments because they have more long-term investment horizons, patient capital, because with these green projects, often there are returns and often very safe, but over a long time period and a bit low, you know, a bit meager for the red-blooded profit-maximizing financial institutions. So that's why it's important to keep that in mind. Um, the different types of banks, and we should encourage and support the not-for-profit stakeholder banks also for environmental reasons. They have an excellent track record. In Germany, there's been much more investment in the green economy, say, compared to the UK, and it's largely down to the banking system. The five big banks have no interest. They don't give these long-term loans. Um, at, at interest rates that would be viable. But in Germany, they do that because they're stakeholder banks, 1,500 of them. And if anyone else would like to comment on that? I, I've got a lot of sympathy with what Richard is saying, but it, it's always more complicated than that. Uh, so I think there does need to be more reliance on these sort of smaller, locally based whatever. But having said that, then you get back into these governance questions. And I, I would just put it to you that, uh, you know, here in Switzerland, back in the late 1980s and the early 1990s, it was the Cantonal banks that got into a lot of trouble. We know that in Germany, a lot of the banks have made some really sort of silly investments. They were, they were I think they were referred to, if you'll pardon this, uh, they were referred to by the investment community as those stupid Germans who were prepared to buy all sorts of subprime stuff without really questioning what was in it, because I guess they were too trusting because their system worked. So the questions and the political influence in many of these small banks is very, very large, and that's the way they like it. So when you get into this, you want to think about governance questions in a very serious way as well. So I agree with the broad thrust of what you're saying, but I think there's, there's some nuances there that are actually quite important. There's a big misunderstanding which needs to be cleared up. You're talking about the Landesbanken, which I suppose would be similar to Kantonalbanken, only bigger yes. in Germany. Um, but they're not the banks I'm talking about. They're, of course, big banks, and they've behaved like big banks, big bad banks. I'm talking about the 1,500 local community banks. They're very small. They've never been in trouble. In the 200-year history, not a single one has gone under. Public money has never been used to bail out any of them. And they account for 70% of deposits in Germany. And they're the ones I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The ones you're talking about are the big banks. And I agree, they are the, know, they are the problem. Um, that, sh that sh you know, one should uh, solve the problem that they get public funds and they get supported. It's the community banks, the small banks, that have been doing sound banking by lending for productive investments, they need to be encouraged. Yeah, yeah. But the central banks are killing them. The ECB is currently killing the German community banks. They will be gone in five years' time, sadly, under ECB policies, heavy regulation, massive regulation. They can't afford to hire five more people just for filling in forms. Yeah. And also, yes. of course, the zero interest rate policy and negative uh, yield curve. That's in order to drive them out of business while they're giving money to the big speculative banks. But ultimately, the, the game plan, as I said, is to get rid of banking entirely and then have only central bank digital currency 
Um, and I think we have, to, we have to fight for our decentralized money creation with decisions locally, because that's one of the questions we need to discuss actually today. Who creates money in this new system? Who's making those decisions and how is that done? And I believe it's, it's best to have decentralized local decision making. Also for governance reasons, you mentioned I mean, governance, and these local banks have you know, accountability to the local community. They're, you know, embedded in the local community. You can't just do a crazy project that's done by the big banks because nobody knows what they're doing, not the decentralized small banks. 